I quit. I quit. Are you still going to do e-commerce? I'm done. I'm not doing anything anymore. Recently, this heart-wrenching video has been circulating online. The man in the video is an e-commerce owner from Yi Wu. After years in the business, he lost everything, and his company eventually went bankrupt. He angrily smashed a box filled with goods. This wasn't just a personal outburst, but a reflection of the current state of Yi Wu's e-commerce industry. When people think of Yi Wu, the hub of small commodities in China, bustling markets and crowds filled with a wide variety of goods usually come to mind. However, in recent years, with declining consumer spending in China, severe competition in the e-commerce industry, and changes in the global economy, orders from Europe and the U.S. have decreased. As a result, this once thriving market has lost much of its former glory. This year, it's not just e-commerce facing a wave of closures. Many surrounding shops have also shut down. Yi Wu's once bustling malls now look desolate. Many shop owners sigh, saying they survived three years of the pandemic only to face this. Today's video is sponsored by Aura. According to National Public Data reports, over 2.9 billion records have been stolen by hackers. These include addresses, birthdays, social security numbers, and phone numbers. A friend of mine recently had her bank account and personal information stolen. The hacker even tried to open a new account in her name and transfer her money to it. Thankfully, the bank caught it in time and alerted her. But this kind of thing kept happening, and she eventually had to ask the bank to freeze her name to prevent any new accounts from being opened. It was a painful experience. This should be a wake-up call for all of us. We've never been more vulnerable online than we are now. But I'm not too worried because I use Aura. Aura monitors your personal data across billions of data points, like the dark web and public records. Aura alerts you if there's any sign of identity theft. They even provide up to five million dollars in identity theft insurance, just in case. Plus, Aura has a ton of other features to keep you safe online, all in one app. With Aura, I finally feel like my online security is fully covered. It's more than just a VPN. It's peace of mind in today's digital world. Go to aura.com/chinaobserver to try it free for 14 days. That's plenty of time for Aura to see if any of your personal data is at risk. Again, that's aura.com/chinaobserver. 感觉现在义乌小商城的人好少。It feels like there are so few people in Yiwu's market these days. It's just after 2 p.m., a time when it should be busy. But look around. Most of the shop owners are either on their phones or lounging in chairs, sleeping at the entrance. There's hardly any customers. It seems like there are more foreigners than Chinese people here. Indeed, there are more foreign visitors in Yi Wu's markets now. However, a closer look shows that these foreigners are no longer mainly from Europe and the U.S. Instead, they're from countries along the Belt and Road Initiative, like those in Africa, the Middle East, and Southeast Asia. Although these customers bring in some orders and make export numbers look good, profit margins have dropped significantly. This decline hasn't been enough to reverse the downward trend. According to local sources, Yi Wu's economy has become stagnant, and young people are left without many options. You might not believe it, but the situation in Yi Wu is really tough. Big companies are laying off employees, and small businesses are losing money or going bankrupt. Many fancy office buildings are now empty, and the street-level shops—too many to count—have already closed, closing. But hardly anyone is making money. They're just hanging on. You see food delivery drivers and ride-hailing drivers everywhere on the streets. Even office workers are just getting by, constantly paying off one credit card with another to avoid falling behind. When they can't pay back their credit cards, they take out loans online. They're too scared to even spend their salaries. Just paying back loans is overwhelming. It's not that young people in Yi Wu don't want to spend; they just can't afford it. Going out for a simple meal or drinks with friends can cost hundreds. So don't pay attention to those claims online about how much young people are saving. Those averages mean nothing. If someone born in the 90s isn't in debt, that's already considered wealthy. This is the reality for most people in Yi Wu. A local person commented, "Now, if you look at Yi Wu International Trade City from areas two to five, all I see are the shop owners." Another person added, "I was there for three days recently and left. After visiting the trade city, it was clear that Yi Wu's golden era is over." Someone else commented, "Is it only Yi Wu? The whole country is like this, isn't it?"
Yiwu, known worldwide as the city of small commodities, has always been a hotspot for e-commerce entrepreneurs. But this bustling place has now become a place of despair for many. This year, with China's sluggish consumer market and fierce competition among e-commerce platforms and merchants, the industry has become highly competitive. Low profits and high risks have become the norm, with a large number of e-commerce businesses closing down. By the second half of this year, 80% of the e-commerce businesses will go under. It's no longer about price wars. Now it's the competition between factories. Factories are stuck with inventory, and they need to clear it out. What they're competing on now is raw materials and futures. Combine that with price wars, advertising costs, and the effects of declining consumer spending, and intermediaries like us have no room to survive. Most e-commerce businesses are barely breaking even. In the future, only two types of e-commerce businesses will remain: those with a brand that can command higher prices, or factories that can keep up with price wars. So e-commerce owners need to plan their next move carefully and choose one of the triathlons. The triathlon he mentioned refers to food delivery, courier services, and driving, which the Chinese authorities call the top three flexible employment options, now becoming the fallback for the unemployed or bankrupt. Despite the wave of closures in Yi Wu's e-commerce industry, young entrepreneurs from all over China continue to flock to Yi Wu, full of ambition. Especially after the pandemic, many young people who couldn't find jobs have turned to Yi Wu, chasing the dream of striking it rich overnight. These young entrepreneurs in Yi Wu typically go through three stages. The first stage is visiting the famous Yi Wu International Trade City. It's 5.5 kilometers long, covering an area of 5.5 million square meters, equivalent to 770 football fields, with 75,000 shops. If you spend five minutes in each shop and walk for eight hours a day, it would take more than two years to visit the whole place. This is enough to overwhelm any young entrepreneur who simply wants to buy low and sell high. But these rookie entrepreneurs are quickly spotted by the seasoned shop owners in Yi Wu. Being alone and inexperienced makes it hard for these young people to negotiate. After facing cold stares from wholesale bosses, they discover that these wholesale prices they were given are often far higher than the regular prices they could find on e-commerce platforms. The second stage involves falling into the trap of entrepreneurship partners, research study groups, or training institutions. Ads for entrepreneurship training schools are everywhere on the streets of Yi Wu. The constant influx of young entrepreneurs has also fueled another booming industry: e-commerce training. Many of these failed e-commerce owners have found a new career in training others, but the future of their students is pretty predictable. In Yi Wu, every three minutes, someone becomes an e-commerce business owner. In every two minutes, one business shuts down. The e-commerce boom is over. If you look at the wholesale markets in Beishao Zhu, you'll see how many shops are for rent. I've been in the finance business in Yi Wu for seven years, and I know a lot of e-commerce owners. A few years ago, they could easily make two hundred thousand to three hundred thousand yuan a month, but not anymore. They have more headaches now and make way less than before. The main issue is there are too many shops and costs are too high. The e-commerce model is changing so fast that many can't keep up. To be honest, a lot of them are secretly preparing to get into training. These training programs, with tuition fees in the thousands, aren't friendly to young people with limited budgets. But the talk of unlimited business opportunities fuels their dreams of striking it rich. The third stage is hands-on experience. Only a lucky few become the success stories that people in the startup community talk about. Most end up mastering the tricks of selling, but still can't sell anything. For example, the most popular Yi Wu research bloggers on social media platforms like Xiao Hongshu may have only 30 to 40 students a month, but many more are interested. In just two months, they filled up 20 groups with a limit of 500 people each. Xiao Yang, who sells jewelry online, spent two months in one of these groups, asking questions whenever he didn't understand something. While he often got short answers, he found that very few people were willing to continue the conversation in private. Xiao Yang feels that the group chats aren't so much about learning, but more about venting and providing emotional support. He says it's already so competitive. One person strikes it big in Yi Wu, and the next day, everyone else finds the same product to copy. Someone else might sell out in a week, while I could be streaming for a month without a single sale. It feels like it's better to just leave it hanging there and hope it takes off one day.
But really, when does that ever happen? Most of them burn through their startup capital, get exhausted by the platform's return and refund policies, and deal with customers who only want free stuff. Most of the time, they end up talking to an empty live stream room. After enduring so much hardship, they finally decide to sell their carefully chosen products as scrap on inventory sheets and return home in defeat. This young man, who calls himself Xiao Guo, is one of many. He came to Yiwu full of hope, ready to make it big. But after two months of struggling, he finally decided to close his company and return to his hometown and continue his fruit business. I'm about to cancel my business license. They say if you want to get rich, come to Yiwu. I don't know how the rest of you are doing, but I'm getting ready to leave. See this? My business license. I'm going to cancel it, and then I'm out of here. My e-commerce dream in Yiwu is over. When I first registered the business, I was full of confidence, but now, honestly, I feel a bit reluctant to leave. I came to Yiwu with dreams, but now it's time to say goodbye. Lao Zhu, a delivery driver in Yiwu, has witnessed countless people coming and going in the city of small commodities. In his opinion, Yiwu never lacks young entrepreneurs, but 80% of them will hand their money over to landlords, restaurants, shop owners, and couriers within a year, and then sell off their remaining stock at rock-bottom prices on inventory sheets before leaving empty-handed. The rest who stick around are usually those with more resources and are able to hold out longer, but making money is tough for everyone. The inventory liquidation process, just like the training industry, is also booming. Xiao Wan, who has been in the inventory business for years, has seen the heartbreak and helplessness of every failed entrepreneur. They buy inventory by weight, regardless of what the product is, so prices are extremely cheap. Recently, he acquired inventory from another inexperienced entrepreneur who had carefully selected goods for live stream sales. But after starting the live stream, it didn't go well, and hardly anything sold. Within a month, the business couldn't survive. The products, many of which are still unopened, had to be sold off as scrap at rock-bottom prices. It's 10 p.m. right now, and I'm working overtime to see some goods at a warehouse. These items are all ready to be cleared out. They're brand new, still in boxes. In a few days, someone else will probably snatch them up. It's all about who spots the inventory first. These products were supposed to be used for live stream sales, but the live stream didn't take off. It's really tough in the live stream market. The competition is just too fierce. Despite their struggles, these newcomers are often blamed. A shop owner who has been in Yiwu for over 20 years complained, After the pandemic, everyone thought there was money to be made in Yiwu, so a huge wave of people rushed in. Without loyal customers, they could only compete by lowering prices, and some were even selling at a loss. They've ruined the market. He has seen many people come to Yiwu hoping to strike gold, only to leave in disappointment. The shop next to his has already changed hands three or four times. In this fiercely competitive environment, not only do new entrepreneurs find it hard to succeed, but many seasoned e-commerce businesses are barely hanging on. A longtime e-commerce owner named Yong said that business in Yiwu has become too difficult, and they're doing everything they can to cut costs to the bone. Is it hard to run a business? For cardboard boxes, we reuse old ones. For workers, we hire the elderly. We're already cutting costs to the bare minimum. Is this the core of competing now? Everything has to be about lowering costs, making it cheaper and cheaper and cheaper still. Even with costs reduced to its lowest possible level, in this extreme environment of competition, there's still no profit to be made. As a result, many large e-commerce companies that have been around for years have also gone bankrupt. A lot of my friends' e-commerce businesses collapsed this year. They all had one thing in common. They were selling low-priced items with very thin profit margins. They looked like big operations, constantly busy, but there was almost no profit. It's hard to imagine companies like that suddenly going under, but it happened. News of big sellers going bankrupt has made headlines several times this year. What I want to say is, in such a competitive market, we should focus on making a profit, not just on revenue numbers. A business needs a reasonable profit margin to survive, and that's the reality. Large e-commerce companies that specialize in warehouse live streaming often deal directly with factories, getting goods at extremely low prices. But even these big players in the live streaming market haven't been able to hold on this year. 
点做藏播的都倒闭了。Have you noticed this year that many warehouse live streaming businesses have shut down? Take this warehouse for example. It has four floors, each about 1,600 square meters. It has plenty of space, but that also means they have a massive inventory. A big inventory means you need more staff, more products, more after-sales service, and you have to tie up a lot of capital. Managing all that requires so much time and energy. In the past, many collaborations operated with well-established teams. You'd come by to my place to stream, and I'd give you a certain percentage of the profits while keeping the rest for myself. But soon, you realize that the profits you keep aren't enough to cover your operations. Once your business grows, you need even more products. And when general goods hit the market, price wars break out. But you can't compete on price. Then you need a lot of freebies and clearance stock, which also consumes manpower. You have to source products, stock them, tie up capital, and handle everything. Only to find that your partners are still unsatisfied, saying you don't have enough products or your after-sales service isn't good enough. It's a lot of effort with little reward. And when they decide to leave, they abandon everything, leaving you with the mess. Most warehouse live streaming businesses can't sustain themselves anymore. As profits decline, many e-commerce businesses and factories accumulate vast amounts of inventory, which eventually drags them down until they go bankrupt. At that point, inventory buyers step in to purchase the stock, but they can't sell it all domestically either. Ultimately, these goods are offloaded abroad at low prices, which is why many countries are now becoming wary of China's dumping of low-quality products overseas. This year, over 80% of the e-commerce market's profit have nearly disappeared. Whether they're selling hundreds of thousands or millions a month, even top brands are sitting on massive amounts of unsold stock. We believe that next year, the entire e-commerce industry will see a market downturn, as factories and brands accumulate more inventory and e-commerce profits decline. Many e-commerce owners and factories will start closing down by the second half of this year. When that happens, the market will see a flood of high-quality clearance goods. That's why, in the second half of this year. We've been making connections with warehouses in Southeast Asia, Europe, and even North America. I believe that in the next three years, the main trend for e-commerce will be offloading excess inventory overseas. There's no way to clear this huge backlog domestically; it has to go abroad. In low prices, Southeast Asia is usually the go-to market. Some say that these low-cost e-commerce businesses are hollowing out the Chinese economy. Take a hat that costs six yuan to produce, for example. It's sold online for 9.9 yuan with free shipping, but the same hat, if sold offline after several layers of wholesale markups, ends up priced at 29.9 yuan in a physical store. This stark contrast between low online prices and high offline prices is quickly undermining the survival of brick-and-mortar retail, which is one of the reasons why physical retail stores across the country are struggling. Under the F2C factory-to-consumer model promoted by platforms like Pinduoduo, the profit margins for small e-commerce sellers have been squeezed to the extreme, leading to the elimination of a large number of small businesses. Along with that, jobs in logistics and warehousing are also being reduced. While consumers may seem to benefit from lower prices in the short term, in the long run, the decline of the physical economy directly impacts personal income growth, leading to a vicious economic cycle. This is why more and more people are lamenting that there's no future in working for others, as wages haven't been increased for years. Moreover, the rise of low-cost e-commerce doesn't just weaken companies' commitment to product quality; it also stifles the research and innovation of high-end brands. Eventually, this market environment drives out quality products in favor of lower-quality ones, and in the long run, everyone becomes a victim of this vicious cycle. As the saying goes, "In an avalanche, no snowflake is spared." The impact of low-cost e-commerce isn't limited to China's domestic market. These platforms also disrupt overseas markets by dumping low-quality goods, leveraging their low prices. They export large volumes of cheap goods, making it hard for local manufacturers in other countries to compete, forcing factories to close and damaging local economies. In response, many countries are raising entry barriers to protect their markets from being overrun by low-quality cheap imports. So the expansion of low-cost e-commerce not only disrupts market order, but also exacerbates global economic imbalances, ultimately leaving both domestic and international markets in turmoil.